The winner is Julie Christie. <laughs> Julie Christie is the Hollywood star known for always doing things her own way. And honestly, she might be onto something. Being in the public eye all the time comes with the job, but Julie decided to break all the rules and make Hollywood work for her, and not the other way around. This is why you might not know a few things about her because of how private she's always been. But the truth about her life will shock you. What was Julie trying so hard to hide? And what were her love life and career really like? Continue watching to find out. Julie Christie was born in India in April 1940. Her father was a tea planter and her mother Rosemary was a painter. Julie spent quite some time on her father's plantation growing up before her parents decided it was best to send her off to England for school. She then finished her studies in Paris, where she became fluent in both French and Italian. Julie wanted to become a linguist at first, but soon became involved in the French art world because of her mother. Julie was also interested in painting like her mom, but decided to pursue acting instead. So she decided to return to England to join the Central School of Speech and Drama. Her first step was acting on stage, which she wasn't very fond of, but at least that gave her the opportunity to travel to the United States and around the world. Her debut on screen was in the TV series A for Andromeda in 1961. It didn't take long before she got her first film role the very next year. Her first film appearance was in Crooks Anonymous, followed by yet another comedy, The Fast Lady. By this time, she was already grabbing the attention of big producers, including the ones of James Bond. They wanted her for a role and Dr. No, but decided to go with someone else because Julie wasn't busty enough. If that had happened today, the producers wouldn't hear the end of it. But back then, casting actresses based on their physical appearance was pretty normal. In 1963, she started working with John Schlesinger, who managed to get Julie a more notable role in Billy Liar. Apparently, he already had an actress for the role of Liz, but decided to fire her and get Julie instead. That was definitely the right decision. This wasn't her breakthrough role, but it was good enough for people to start noticing her for the talented and gorgeous gorgeous British star she was. However, her fame skyrocketed when she appeared in the movie Darling, where she played Diana Scott, a social butterfly who turned into a dull socialite. Her performance was so good she won many awards for the role, including the Best British Actress Award from the British Film Academy. Her career was going great, and to top it all off, she also got cast in the movie adaptation of Dr. Zhivago, which showed Julie's real potential. She was born to be a star, and she also raised her prices at this point. No more getting paid $35,000 per movie, Julie was now asking for $400,000. One failure in her career that she could never get over was the movie Fahrenheit 451. She was actually really excited about this role because she admired the director, Francois Truffaut, but the film faced many difficulties. The first one is the director's lack of English knowledge, which truly hurt the movie. And then the problem with Julie's co-star. Terrence Stamp was clearly the right man for the role, but because he and Julie had been lovers in the past, he wasn't sure if he could act next to her. So they had to hire the next best thing, Oscar Werner. Oscar hated how much attention Julie got, and the movie just ended up being a failure. This is probably what made Christy pickier when it came to accepting roles. She knew her worth, and she didn't want to appear in just any movie. Now she only wanted roles that would reward her artistically, rather than focus on the financial success of the movie. Julie started appearing in way fewer movies, but at least the ones she picked were all worth it. However, one thing Julie never got used to was the fame that came with all of this success. She knew the job came with all the fame and paparazzi, but she decided to spin things around. Ignoring the media and having a private life became her signature move. Julie managed to become an actress and be able to work on her own terms. But did she do this because she wanted to or because her ex-boyfriend made her do it? <laughs> Beatty was an actor who loved living his life more than chasing roles in acting. Money wasn't a problem, considering he'd earned enough for his role in Bonnie and Clyde to last him a long time, and this is probably what attracted Julie so much. But Warren was the first one to fall head over heels for Julie. They first met in 1966 at the Royal Command performance of the movie Born Free, and they started dating soon after that. But Julie was warned from the very beginning to break up with him because apparently he went through women like a businessman through a dozen oysters. But Julie didn't listen to all the accusations of what a womanizer he was and continued dating him. He was also the reason why she refused many roles at the peak of her career. She refused many lead roles, including the $1 million offer she got to play Jacqueline Kennedy in The Greek Tycoon. 
If an actress wants to remain one of the top best actresses, not working continuously is basically career suicide. But she did gain some good things during the seven-year relationship. After visiting a working farm together, they were disgusted by how the animals were treated. Soon they became animal rights activists, and the relationship changed Julie for the better. It even helped her gain a political perspective. She said, He gave me a political perspective, which I'm very grateful for. I loved the way, say, that he would go to baseball matches and stand up in the interval and talk about getting rid of guns. He would be this little tiny figure in this big baseball stadium, and I would be looking down at him. I thought he was wonderfully courageous for doing that. Even after breaking up with Warren, Julie remained the same. She continued to be inspired by Warren and continued only picking movies that truly caught her attention. Even though she broke up with Warren, they still continued to be friends to this day, and the roles she could never say no to were the ones she'd been playing right next to her friend Warren. That's why she accepted the roles in Heaven Can Wait and Shampoo, even though she now doesn't agree with the movie's views on women. Another movie of hers that is still talked about is Don't Look Now, where her realistic love scene with Donald Sutherland might have been one of the most controversial ones back then, but the fame didn't get her excited anymore. Julie wasn't like the rest of the actresses back then. She was ahead of her time and did many things differently to the point that people even found her weird. That didn't stop Julie from living the life she always wanted. I would cringe if I saw my picture on the cover of a magazine staring out at people who didn't know me, Julie said. And if I saw somebody reading about me, it would be the most horrible experience because I knew they'd be reading a fantasy that would be far removed from anything to do with me. Julie decided to fully turn her back to fame when she moved to a farm in Wales with her husband, Duncan Campbell, and decided to reshape her life. It was almost impossible to ever catch her at a red carpet event, even when it meant missing out on the opportunity to get the awards she won. The breeding sheep on her little farm was far more important. Hollywood was against everything I had been brought up to appreciate. The world of celebrity didn't mean a single thing to my mom. Her attitude filtered down to me, which is why I take all the celeb stuff with a pinch of salt, she said. Julie also talked about how she preferred a peaceful existence rather than a chaotic one. Movies used to give her a lot of anxiety because she lacked the confidence other actors have. Making them is very social. You have to be with people and you socialize all the time. Filming and being with film actors is like being in one long cocktail party without the drinks. Acting took me away from real life to a pretend life. I wanted the real life back, Julie shared. That's why she moved back to Britain, as far away from Hollywood as possible. Julie hated being looked at and hated doing anything in public. Although she continued to play movies throughout her whole life, she did everything else in private. The only Julie Christie people know is the one on their screens. Julie proved to the world that she doesn't need to be choked up by Hollywood in order to become a famous actress. Maybe if she had continued accepting every single role, walking on red carpets, and answering super superficial interview questions, she would have been much more popular. But being happy and at peace with her life sounds so much better. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch this other one too.